Hi, welcome to day nine of 12 days of Singer Message Transforms videos and blogs. Yesterday, we looked at using the timestamp converter to convert timestamps, where we've got data that's logically a timestamp but isn't being handled as such, and the type is maybe set to a string or a big int, and we saw how we can tell Kafka Connect, no, actually, this is a timestamp, and to handle it as such, which means that when it gets written down to target systems or used in consumers, it's actually recognized and handled as a timestamp. Today, we're going to see a similar single message transform, which lets us work with other data types. So by now to say this field here, it looks like a string, but actually we're going to cast it into a float or into an int. So here is our source connector. As in previous examples, the source connector itself is actually just a data generator. But kind of like imagine in your minds that this source connector here is actually connecting to a source database or to a message queue or to a syslog or to any of the numerous places in which we can ingest data using Kafka Connect source connectors. So this source connector, we're going to apply some transformations to it because the data that it's writing into Kafka, we want to change the types associated with the different fields. So here's the basic one. It was saying we're going to generate some data into a topic called D9 transactions. We go and create that connector, and now we're generating data into that particular topic. If we go and have a look at the schema that's created for that particular topic, we can see it looks like this. So we're going to our schema registry, REST API. We say, look at the value schema for this particular topic in the latest version. And it says, well, it looks like this. Our transaction date is a string, and we talked yesterday how you can actually address that using the timestamp converter. We can see the item is a string, which sounds correct. If it's a, an item description, customer remarks, string, that's all good. The cost, though, is a string, and the units is a string. Those things don't sound quite right, because the cost we probably want as a float, and the units, assuming we're not chopping things up, we probably want as an integer. Let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to apply a transformation to the source connector. So as the data comes into the system, we're going to fix those data types so that they're stored correctly. Now, it could be that you've got a source topic and you're trying to set up a sync connector and the data types are just what they are in that source topic, which is fine. You just use this uh, single message transformation in your sync connector instead. So one option is you transform the data as it arrives into Kafka in a source connector and you modify the data types so that it's stored as they actually uh, need to be. The other option is you take the data as it is in the Kafka topic, whether it's strings or whatever, and you say as it goes out through this particular sync connector, we're going to apply those transformations to those different field types. So it's different ways of doing it, and it probably comes down to whether you own that source connector in Just. Or maybe the data types are correct logically within the Kafka topic, but for a particular target technology or a particular target requirement, you need to modify them. So then you would do a kind of like a single transformation for that particular sync connector. So here's a second version of that connector. So this one we're going to call 01. The same configuration as before, except the topic name that we're going to populate is D9-01. And then we introduce our transformation. So our transforms, we're going to call it cast types, just a label, call it whatever we want. And for cast types, we say it's got a type. And the type of that single message transformation is cast. And we're applying it to the value part of the message. And then we have our spec for our different casting that we want to do. So here you can actually put multiple fields in a single transformation. So you say, well, the cost, we're going to cast it to a float. The units, we're going to cast it to an integer. And you can have like float 64 or integer 32, or there's different permutations that you can use here. These are the ones that I've set. We go and create it. It's created the new connector. We're going to have a look at the data as it comes through it. So here's Kafka Cat, and we're going to pull in data from uh, day 9 01 transactions. And we look at the five messages as they come through, the last five messages, sorry, and just look at the payload. And now we can see as that data is coming through in the topic, if I just pause the display there, we can see the units are coming through as an integer um, and we can see the cost is coming through as a float. We can validate that and go and have a look at the schema itself held in the schema registry. And so here is the schema registry and it's day 9 one is the, uh, the subject. And we look at that and now card type string, item string, cost is a float. 
is a float, it's not floating, a float, and y units is held as an integer. So this is exactly what we want. We're now storing the data in the Kafka topic using the correct data types appropriate for that particular data. What it also means is that when we come to consume that data, so as is the pattern with these different videos that I'm doing, we're going to use MySQL as a target system to which to write the data, but I'm just doing that because that's what's set up in my test environment here. But with Kafka Connect, the great thing is you can plug in any number of different source connectors going out to different sync connectors. So I'm using like a dummy data generator as my source connector. Could be a database, could be a message queue, could be a flat file, could be a syslog, could be any number of different things. And then I'm using for my sync connector a database for the JDBC sync connector. Um, it could be, instead of MySQL, it could be Oracle or DB2 or SQL Server or any other database. It could be um, Hadoop, it could be HGFS, it could be BigQuery, it could be Snowflake, it could be Mongo, it could be Elastic, it could be any of the other dozens and dozens of technologies to which you can sync data. Regardless though, the principles I'm showing here are the same, because that's the beautiful thing about Kafka connectors, it's a pluggable architecture. So you have your particular connector for the technology in question, so pull data in from a database or push data to Elasticsearch, and then you have your transforms, and you simply plug those in to the pipeline. So you say, okay, we've got data in a topic. Here, we want to stream it down to a database. So we use the JDBC sync connector. We shouldn't need any transformations because the data that we've written into that topic is as we wanted it. We set the integer type, we set the float type. So we take the data from this topic here. In fact, let's do this. Let's show you what happens if we route data from the original topic as well. So day nine transactions, didn't have the transformations applied. So with the sync connector, you can specify multiple topics. So we're gonna take data from both of those topics and we'll end up with two tables in MySQL. So we check that it's working against the uh, uh, sync, the, sorry, the REST API of Kafka Connect. And we can see the sync here, it says it's running. And if we have a look in MySQL, and we say, look at the tables, we've got two tables. The first one here, this is the raw data as it was before. So this is the one in which it's all just going to be strings, all just text, which is what we can see there. So units is text and uh, cost is text. So what we actually want to do is look at this one, D9-01. So this is the topic to which we applied the transformations in the source connector. So the resulting data in Kafka is typed correctly. And now we can see our units is an integer and our cost is a float, and maybe we don't want small int, maybe we just want like integer or big integer. You can change those as you need to. So I set like int 16, I think. You could have int 32 or int 64. The point is you can change the types of these fields either at ingest, as we've done here. We could do it at egress as well. So we could say, well, the transaction date, which we saw in a previous tutorial, you can actually use the timestamp converter against. We didn't do that on the source topic. So in the source topic, it's held as a string. So it's come down to the target as a string. Let's go off piece a little bit. Let's actually go and do this and apply it to the connector. So we're going to create our connector here and we're going to add in a transformation. So we can say, let's add in this. So this was on my clipboard already. We've got the transforms. We're going to say the, we need to add that into the list of transforms. So we're going to say transforms and we're going to say transforms. We've got one called convert TS. That's just the label. Transforms convert TS has got a type. The type is timestamp converter, which we're applying to a field in the value part of the message. The field is called transaction date. This is the format of it coming in as a string. So that's the, uh, the date time format string. The target type we want it to treat it as is as a timestamp, not as a uh, epoch or a date or a time, but as a timestamp type. So there are our topics. Now let's see what happens here because I suspect it's either going to go upset um, and kind of say, well, we can't really do that because you've got those tables there already. So in fact, let's just get rid of those tables just to avoid any tears. So let's say drop, uh, what was it called? Day nine transactions. Uh, why aren't you happy with that? Drop table. Yeah, drop table. Drop table and drop table zero one. So now we've got no tables. Ah, so there, what's going on there is my existing connector is running. So I drop the table and the existing connector is running. It says, well, I need to write some data. So I'm going to create the table. So let's do this. Let's go and delete 
my existing connectors. So we're going to do that, and we're actually going to do this. So we're going way off script here, but it's fun. So it's going to say, pull out a list of connectors, pipe it through JQ just to spit out the objects, run it through Pico, which you're about to see. The output of Pico is going to be one of those connectors, which we then pass using Xargs to delete. So we run that, it says which of those connectors do you want to delete, which is rather nice. And we say we've got the two source connectors, we want to keep those, get rid of that sync connector, because that's the one that was recreating that table. So that's done, so now I can drop that table, and I can drop that table, I can say show tables, and they won't have reappeared this time, because we don't have an existing connector writing down to it. So now I can go and create my new sync connector with my new configuration, which says take those existing topics, but transform the timestamp field as it passes through. So it's created that, and if we go and say show tables, we've got our two new tables, and what we should see, and we're going to, so we're going to say describe this one here, this one here, if I can copy and paste it correctly, is going to say we're going to got the original data in the original topic with no uh, data type changes, so it's all just text fields, except the timestamp one, which in the sync connector, we've applied that override using the transformation. So this is what we expected. So cost is text, units is text, the transaction uh, date is a timestamp, which is exactly what we hoped it would be. And then this one here, this is going against that new topic in which the source connector had the transformation saying, modify the unit to make it an integer, modify the cost to make it a float, adds into the source topic. So that streams down to the database table and sets those data types correctly. And then we said, well, actually the date time, that timestamp field also needs setting. So we picked that up in the sync connector itself and we did that. And now we have a table that looks pretty good because we've got a transaction date, which is a timestamp. We've got our units, which are an integer. Our customer remarks are quite clearly going to be a varchar. Cost is a float. And then these two here, also varchars, also text fields. So that's using the cast single message transform. It's also using the timestamp converter single message transform. A little bit of bonus stuff there, but it actually makes a lot of sense to combine the two because in effect, they're both casting data types. We can cast a string into a numeric. We can, we can cast a, a string into a timestamp using the timestamp converter. String to numeric is done with cast. String to timestamp, timestamp converter. So subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for lots more videos and tutorials all about Apache Kafka and Confluent Platform.